What's going on guys? In today's video we're going to find out how good a team of players born in Quebec is. A bunch of been asking for this one. I actually made this video a couple years ago and the team lost in the first round of Montreal Canadiens of all teams. So we'll see if this time they can do a little bit better. As you can see there in game of course, they are the Quebec Nordiques rocking the vintage logo. You can see I've also got on my t-shirt here. Top players there, Jonathan Humerdeau, Patrice Bergeron and Chris Letang. I'm um, also to you guys you want to mention, didn't have a video in the last four days. My voice probably sounds a little bit weird. I got sick again, which just sucks. And next, you guys look at the divisions. You can see I added the Nordiques as the 33rd team. Had me in the Atlantic Division, only division in the East with Canadian teams. Plus, the guy being in the same division there as Montreal, who they're six overall higher than. So, Nordiques there, 91 overall, tied with Boston, one below Tampa. I feel like they should be a playoff team. All right, guys, I'm next, I'm sure what the lines are looking like for this team. As I mentioned, really should be a playoff team. Like, they're pretty stacked. So, first line there, Huberdeau, Bergeron, Yanni Gord get a plus five chem boost. You got Marc So Dubois Perron on the second line, getting a plus two. Lafreniere there on the third with the and Mantha. If Lafreniere can grow, he's really gonna help out that third line. Uh, fourth here, you got Bolivier, Stastny, Waugh, so definitely more defensive. In terms of the defense, you got Shabbat and Letang on the top pair. Very solid top pair. And they're getting a plus three chem boost too, which helps. On the second pair there, you got Samuel Girard, Matheson. And the bomb pair there is Carrier and Savard. And in terms of the goaltending here, of course, uh, Marc Andre Fleury there is our starter. Montembeau backing him up. Surprisingly, there was actually no other. Quebec born goalie in the NHL right now, which I thought was very, very surprising. I honestly figured there'd be at least, you know, a handful, like four or five. Uh, power play one is pretty stacked. That should be a solid power play. Power play two even isn't too bad. Uh, the four man there looks pretty solid. Four man two, same thing. Except we get a minus two, which sucks. Uh, PK is actually probably this team's strong suit, like very good two way forwards. I mean, Dino and Bergeron on the same PK, they're just going to shut down like any team's power play. Stassi and Gord even very good. Uh, PK three, Bolvier Wall, like. For a third PK, that's not bad at all. Uh, if you guys want to see the three mans there quickly. Uh, surprisingly, no minuses there, but I think EA did release a patch today that fixed that, so maybe that's the reason why. Uh, in terms of extra players here, Jonathan Duran doesn't make the team. He's on the first line though in the AHL. Frederick Goudreau there and Matthew Joseph. Uh, Valeno on the second there with Broussard and Comtois. You got Carrier there on the third line. Uh, defensively, you got Vlasic, Lozon, Joseph. Again, no goalies, which like I said, uh, was quite, quite shocking. Uh, in terms of the captaincy for this team, you guys can probably guess. Had to give the C to Bergeron. Gave an A there to Huberdeau, as well as the Tang. If I could, I'd probably give an A to Mark andre Fleury, but unfortunately, you cannot for goalies. Bergeron there, you can see currently point per game in the preseason, as well as the team there, 4-0-3. Have not lost a game yet in regulation. I'll show you guys the ratings here, as well as what the jerseys are looking like. So, right there's the home. Obviously, I just tried to replicate the Quebec Nordiques jersey the best I could. So, right there's look at the home. Again, sharp, sharp jerseys. I'm a big fan. The away there. Actually, guys, I don't know why those socks are blue. They should be white with blue stripes. I just totally forgot to change them, I guess. And then right there's a look at the alternate side to go with like a black Nordiques jersey, which I think actually looks kind of sick. Uh, Reigns there, 94 offense, 91 defense, 85 goal So, uh, let's see what this team does. Again, two years ago, first round next to Montreal. I feel like they should do better this year. All right, guys, we just passed the trade deadline. Our record there's above 500, and we're currently second last in the division. If this team doesn't pop off the next month and a half, we're not making the playoffs. All right, guys, so there's three games left in this season now. We've actually been popping off since the deadline. We've only lost three games there, so somehow we find ourselves in a playoff spot, at least fighting for one with three games to go. We got 90 there in 79. Canadians of all teams are actually tied with us, so we'll see whether or not we can hold on here. Another game here against Dallas, 10-4 win. This team wants the playoff berth. Detroit Red Wings up next. 5-4 win. We're not locked in yet, though. Uh, Canadians are tied with us. But their season's over. So I think all we need here is an OT loss. The Avalanche we lose to, but we still get in. We have the tiebreaker. And honestly, guys, I'm a little bit confused, but also happy. Even though we lost that game, we still got into the playoffs. I don't know how we were in a lock already then. If we could have lost it and still got in. Like, the Canadian season was over. Oh, the Red Wings. 93 points. They might have had a game left at like 92 or 93. That's why didn't even notice them there. I was going to say, guys, it would have sucked so much that the Avalanche stopped us from making the playoffs. Of course, the other team, the Quebec Nordiques, actually became in real life. So we'll take a look here and see how the team did. Patrice Bergeron actually our leading scorer there. 71 points in 82 games. Uh, see what everyone else here did behind him. Uh, so you got Huberdeau, also 71. I think it was Huberdeau leading in scoring most of the year. They end up tied, which is actually pretty surprising. They did have Marchessler here with 56 points. The Tang with 55, which is really good for defensemen. Perron, 54, so five guys there, 50 plus points. Yanni Gord, almost 50, but playing on the first line, honestly, expect a bit better. Shabbat, almost 50, solid. Dubois, 36, I thought he'd do better. Lafreniere here, 32, also thought he'd do a little bit better there. Playing on the third line as well as getting a lot of power play time. He's down 85 overall, though, which is good to see. The uh, rest of the guys, Manta, 30. know they're only 24. Take a look here and see Flurry stats. 
906, 2.99. So they're decent, but definitely nothing spectacular. I still can't believe this team made the playoffs. Like, I would say up until about January, they had a negative record. Then come, like, you know, mid, late January, they were 500, and then they just really turned it on the last, you know, two and a half months or so of the season. In terms of the AHL team there, Matthew Joseph, over a point per game. Jeez, he went off. Duran there, basically a point per game. Goudreau, Valeno, Broussard, Comtois, Lozon. So pretty much all the Quebec guys. I'll lean the HL team, which is cool to see. And now in terms of the entire league, you got Dreisaitl there winning there at Ross with 114 points. McDavid second with 112. Kucherov, point. Matthews, Huberdeau on the Flames, though. Uh, McKinnon there, Aho, Ranton. And in terms of goals, Kucherov actually wins the Marisha Shard. And in terms of defensive scoring, you got Hedman leading there with 89 points. Uh, so goalies here, Vasilevsky most wins, 41. Best save percentage in the entire league was actually Montembeau and our team, 0.934, but he was a backup. He also had below two goals again, so he popped off for us. Best numbers though for a starter, Saros there, 0.927 and a 2.46. And then the best rookie skater this year was actually Shane Wright on the crack in there. Uh, if you guys want to see Jack Quinn after I modified him, mainly potential there, tons of X factors, because you guys forget, he was 8th overall pick. I feel like EA definitely underrates him a bit. So take a look at the standings now. I feel like there's a ton of teams that are probably, you know, really close in that middle pack. Avalanche there with the President's Trophy. Let's see. We finished 11th in the entire league. That sucks. Montreal 12th. They don't make it. If we don't exist, Montreal makes the playoffs. So we come in and boot out the other team from the Quebec. That's crazy. Uh, Red Wings even at 14 miss. So the West has some pretty poor teams making it. Vegas, Dallas. I mean, they weren't terrible, but obviously uh, Montreal, Detroit, Deserved it more. Last in the league there, Philadelphia Flyers, 53 points. And now the first round here, guys, we have the team that's been in the Stanley Cup the last three years in a row, Tampa Bay Lightning. Let's say we fair. First two games in Tampa, one and one. Honestly, I'll take that. Head home now to Quebec City. I think that's where this team would be, you know, located. Uh, another, you know, one and one. So two and two so far in the series. Head back to Tampa. OT loss, close game. Do or die at this point. Have to win the next two. We'll sim this one here at home, see what happens. Up one nothing early, Yanni Gord, 3-2, to two. Savard and Huberdeau for us, Graves and Hagel for them. So they made a trade there with the Devils for Ryan Graves. Are you kidding me? And then they come back and win it in the third period, outshot us 45-35. So literally two years later, same story. Instead of losing to Montreal first round, we lose to Tampa first round. That sucks. And now the playoffs are complete, guys. Vegas Golden Knights, they actually won the Stanley Cup. I'm not going to lie. I thought this team was destined for the Cup after, like, the Cinderella story to even get into the playoffs. I thought they were just going to keep it going onto a Cup run. Oh, the Coyotes there jumped from 13 to 3. Geez. Surprised, honestly, they even did that well. And then they still, you know, get a top 3 pick. Huberto, 8.6 games in the playoffs. I mean, that's not bad at all. Definitely not his fault we missed. Take a look here at the playoff tree quickly. Vegas there beat Calgary in 7, Edmonton in 7, Colorado in 6, and then Washington in 6. In terms of the awards, guys, obviously already know the two team one. Individual here, Dreisselart, Ross, as well as the Hart, Hedman, James, Norris, Kucherov, Lady Bing, Jack Quinn got the Calder over Shane Wright, Theodore Conn Smythe, Saros got the Vesta there, Allmark, Thel, William Jennings, uh, Chirac, Bill Masterton, Dallas coach Jack Adams, Bergeron and our team got the Selkie. Okay, so we get a little bit of hardware there, that's cool. Dreisel, Ted Lindsay. Kutra, Marisha Shard. I'm curious AHL wise, we didn't win the Calder Cup or the regular season, but like, do we have any players win awards? Cole in here actually got most points and MVP. Sashnikov, Bobby Brink, Clint Denning, Kotchikov, Krebs, Hiroshi. Uh, no, okay, so AHL team, even though like they played pretty well, had a couple of point per game players, uh, did not have enough to get an award. So there you have it, guys. The Quebec team, like I said, awesome run there to make into the playoffs. In fact, you know, we lost round one to Tampa. It's a pretty good team to lose to. So, Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you guys are not subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.